got Mike and Steve from SDR Play who are coming here under our uh, How Do I uh, set of sessions, which we'll hopefully uh, we'll all learn something from. And it's really just an idea for uh, uh, users to get together and actually ask any specific uh, related questions relevant to them and maybe relevant to the others. So I'll leave you in the capable hands of Mike and Steve. Thanks very much for dedicating your time as always. And uh, I know the Ham Radio Network really appreciate it. Can I, can I jump in here real quick before Mike starts fielding questions? I'm not seeing any on the chat yet, but um, I just wanted to point out that John Hudson, our colleague at SDR Play, he put an announcement uh, of this uh, webinar on one of the uh, groups, user groups. And there are, you know, there's a bunch of people that say they don't like to do Zoom calls and all that stuff. And it's like, I'm not going to get into that. I don't care whether it's Zoom or, or any other means. But um, I assume you're going to do, since you're recording this, Andy, I assume you're going to upload it to YouTube like you have the previous ones. Yeah. So what I told everybody was, hey, if you don't want to be on the live call, that's fine. It, it's going to be recorded. It'll be uploaded to your channel. And I gave the link to your channel. So you know, people that aren't actually here will probably be uh, watching the replay later. Thanks, Steve. So, Thank you very much. So what's your language? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike, so, uh, over to you. Okay, well, who would like to, well, obviously, as I, as I said earlier, uh, if you have a question, comment, concern about Esther Uno, now is the time to ask. So I don't know if we do raise hand or whoever wants to come first, I see, I see a question already came in on pan adapters, Mike. I didn't and see uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, I have a one slide answers all questions thing. I'm going to see if I can find it. I believe that's the gentleman that created the ticket with CW Skimmer. That call rings a bell. OK, well, do you want me to say a few introductory words? Um, sure. I don't have Uno running. That's the problem. Maybe, um, well, hell, can you? Can you do it on yours and I'll talk you through it. Sure. Mark. Uh, Andy, can uh, you allow me to screen share? Yeah, you got it, Mike. Okay. Okay. So um, for, do, for doing a pan adapter, the, the main thing you want to do is you want to be um, synchronizing SDR Uno with your rig. And we do that via OmniRig. And Mike, I don't know if you have OmniRig uh, on your computer there set up already. Uh, I don't. No, you don't. Okay. Maybe, maybe uh, if you give me a minute, I'll try and get it running on my end. Then. You want me to? You want me to try and do that? Oh, here's a good point. Um, here's here's the first thing. If you want OmniRig, you you download it from a website called DX Atlas. Go back to where it said all at the top, and. Uh, yeah, there you go, at dxatlas.com. And what you want to get is OmniRig 1.2. That is the version that works with SDR Uno. If you go back to that search page, Mike, uh, the second one said something about OmniRig 2.1. Do not get that. It does not work with SDR Uno. And the damn thing should never have been called OmniRig in the first place. It's nothing to do with the original OmniRig. So that's the first thing you need. So. Uh, to get OmniRig, you go to, and yeah, if you don't mind downloading it and we'll run it, you don't, you know, you, we won't go through a complete setup because I don't know if we've even got a rig there to talk to. So if you scroll down, oh, you've got, yeah, if you scroll down or, or to where it says downloads, uh, see the downloads page, you can go down to where it says OmniRig and you can download it. And there's also a separate file underneath that with some additional any files. And that's what personalizes the commands for different types of radios. So if you don't mind downloading it, Mike. Uh, I don't have a rig, but I'm putting all the links in chat. Well, yeah, we, we don't need to worry too much about actually having a link. I can just show people what happens. So um, if you can firstly yeah, download that and run it, if you don't mind. And uh, if, if it'll let you, okay, so we'll do the install. It's real quick and easy. Hopefully it will show, did, is it be hiding behind Uno? I thought when you run it, it, it straight away opens up. Can you minimize all or something? It should, but it's not launching. I might need to reboot. 
Oh, wait, here we uh, go. Well, go, just go to the start menu. You should, there it is. Here. There's Omni Rig. So when you start up Omni Rig, uh, you get a choice of two rigs you can control. And the first thing you want to do is select your rig type in the first box. And there's a list of every, almost every rig known to man. So you just select that. The second box is the COM port number. Mike, can you open up per uh, device manager? Can we see that? All we're seeing at the moment is Uno and OmniRig. Yeah, there's device manager. So under COM ports, if you had a rig connected. I should, you know what I can do? I can plug in one of my uh, circuit Python things. You don't have any COM ports in use, huh? Nope, let me. Uh, okay. So anyway, if you plug a rig in, you will see a, a, an entry, uh, assuming you've installed the appropriate driver. Uh, you just connect the uh, the rig through its USB port, or if it only has an RS-232, go through an RS-232 to uh, uh, USB adapter. And, and you will see a, a setting here uh, in Device Manager called COM ports. And if you look down the list of COM ports, you will see the one that corresponds to your rig. So just note what number it is. And then when you go back to uh, this list, just select the same COM port right there. Now, once you've selected a, a rig type, it will populate all the rest of the fields and normally they will work just fine. So having done that, uh, would it let you get away with saying none, Mike, do you think in? Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work anyway because it's not gonna well, yeah, okay. so support. Once you've done that, you've set up OmniRig. So the next step is to go back to SDR Uno and click on the settings in the main window, upper left. and uh, hit cat um, and then find the well, cats under RX control. No, no, no. You want the O-Rig tab is what we're looking for. There it is, O-Rig. So at the moment, it says can't connect to OmniRig server at the bottom. If, if this was for real and you had a rig there, it would say connected to OmniRig server at the very bottom. And uh, depending on whether you set it up as rig one or rig two, uh, next to rig one type, it will say something like, uh, Kenwood TS590SG, rig one status should say connected. Uh, rig one used by depends on how you set your VRXs up. So that tells you that you're connected to the rig via OmniRig. So the next step is to go to your RX control window, which is vanished. There it is. And click on the settings window for that. Again, go to the OrIG tab. And uh, you see, you get you get to choose rig one or rig two. You can leave the check marks uh, in their default mode, and uh, and then the other only other thing you have to do is go to the top of RX control and click on that RSYN one button. That means rig sync rig one, and once you've got that, everything will be in sync. So now, if you spin the dial on your rig, uh, you will see the frequency display will change in SDR Uno, and if you uh, you know click on a frequency in SDR Uno, your rig will change to that very same frequency. Now, if we can go back to the settings in RS Control for a second, Mike, there is a tab called CAT just to the left of O-Rig. Do not do anything on this thing, especially where it says enable and connect. Mike's obviously connected something else to the COM port. That is not used for rig control. The CAT tab is used to enable SDR Uno to be controlled by external third-party software. So for example, if you're running a login program or something like that, you'll probably have a virtual serial port pair and you will connect that to SDR Uno uh, on this pane here. But if you're connecting to a, a rig as a pan adapter, you do not want to enable and connect on that tab. So that is your basic setup for doing a pan adapter. And uh, that's assuming you found some way of uh, sharing your antenna between uh, the rig and your RSP. Uh, in, on some rigs, you can get an RX pass through that will go straight through to the rig. Um, there is also an option to use IF out, which I personally dislike with a passion. And uh, what you can do is you can put, put it on that tab Mike was on there just a minute ago. You can put in the um, IF frequency of your rig and uh, do enable. And what that will do is it will fix the tune frequency of the RSP to the IF output frequency of your rig and uh, then show you any stations that are there in the immediate vicinity. The bad part of that is it does not give you any provision to tune to anything other than what your radio is tuned to. If you have a broadband RX output or you use an external splitter, 
uh, and a TR switch arrangement, then you can uh, tune SDR Uno over its entire usable range without any concern of what the rig's capabilities are. So are there any questions at that point? And there was silence. Um, hey, does anybody have specific questions uh, re regards to SDR Uno with uh, how do I X, how do I do this? How do I do that? Hello, this is Dave, KB6. Everybody's quiet. How are you, Dave? Oh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm just a brand new user. Uh, I think I've talked to Steve on the uh, forum this morning, too. Very nice. Thank you, Steve. I uh, just have a question about if audio spectrum and waterfall is available or if I'm missing it or is there a pub, uh, plug in or something like that. The, the spectrum you want to see the shown. audio spectrum, are you saying? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, you know, a waterfall and a spectrum display just like the IF or the RF, except for the audio. Uh, there isn't one, is the short answer. Uh, if you go to a program okay. like Cubic, you will see um, like an oscilloscope trace of the demodulated audio. Uh, everything you see in, uh, in UNO is in the frequency domain. Um, so, you know, if you tune, uh, for example, if Mike tunes to what, what looks like it may be a signal somewhere there in the middle. And then um, you, I don't know how well you can see it, uh, but there's a red line that shows the uh, tuning frequency. And there's also a shaded gray area either side of it. And that is amplified here in the auxiliary SP window. So that is the, the tune spectrum. So any filters you specify in RS control will be within that dark area you see in SP2. So that is the frequency spectrum of what you're tuned to. Does that make sense? Okay, well, that, that's, that's very good. I wonder if there, is there a place we can uh, put a, um, uh, some sort of more lengthy description of a request for a feature? You can send all requests to software at sdrplay.com. Uh, it goes directly to the development team. Uh, if they have any questions or concerns regards to that request, they will contact you. You might not get a reply, but it, they do read all the feature requests that come in via that email address. Another option you could do is use a virtual audio cable and run a, a, a third-party spectrum analyzer uh, software, which will give you that audio waveform. Fantastic. Thanks so much. I take, mentioned there's you, a pile of feature requests. Yeah, you can take the, <laughs> Thanks, you, can guys. Run a virtual, you can run a virtual audio cable from the output here and then feed the signal from SR Uno into that second application and get that waveform. That, that'd be great. Yeah. I, uh, if you I can, guess since I got you all here, I'd like to be able to click on, uh, you know, notch filters to throw on that as well, uh, much like you can do, I guess, on the, not right. sure what you call it, the IF display or baseband display. Yeah, yeah. all the notches are in the EX control, but if you draw, if you in the chat, if you can, uh, put your hey, Mike, do it the easy way, like I would. No, get no, just that the, EX just, control. We get two notch filters for free if you use the buttons in RX control. Yeah, these two over these two uh, on the right side of RS control hit hit notch one. Want notch one and notch two. Yeah, yeah. If you hit notch one and then mouse over the uh, the SP two, SP one SP old zero rather and uh, hold the yeah, there it is right there. You see yeah, that? No, it's just my windows. They're all yeah. going out of whack here. And uh, if you uh, what is it uh, shift. Is it shift you have to hold or control and then left click, you, you can set notch one and right click will set notch two. Correct. Now you have to enable notch two to see both of them. There's the two notches right there. Now, if, if, if that doesn't give you enough granularity and you wanna mess with the uh, notch width and all that stuff, then you can invoke the EXW panel, which I'll let Mike talk you through because he likes that complicated stuff. Well, if you're looking to notch, you can adjust the bandwidth of the notch and manually adjust the frequency within the frequency domain of where that notch is placed manually here, up and down with the mouse wheel or the same here with the bandwidth. 
if what I was saying earlier is if you want to drop your email address in the chat, I'll forward you links to that uh, virtual audio cable, which is free, and the uh, Spectrum software, which is also free. And you can pipe the audio from Uno into that, and you'll have your audio envelope waveform there. Ah, very good. I actually have a spectrum, so so I'm set okay. there, and uh, I'd have to get used to virtual audio cable. It's yeah, been just, years since I tried it. <laughs> there's one. It's uh, VB Cable Hi-Fi. I'll find it, and then I'll plop it in chat, and then you can go from there. Very good. Thank you very much. I'll yeah, see no if problem. I can find the chat thingy and uh, put my email in there. Thanks, guys. Okay. I, I don't know if Cody came in too late to to miss the description of setting up a Panadat too, because I just described that. Um, and I don't know, Andy, is it possible to share my screen for a second? Yep, go on, go Let ahead. Okay, uh, do I have to do anything special? No, Mike has to stop his. Ah, okay. Now, okay. somewhere, okay, do I have to do anything? Just hit share screen. Hit share screen. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm, uh, I've got the wrong. Uh, I'll tell you, this technology is, is way too complicated for me. Uh, here we go. See if you can see that. So hopefully yeah. um, you can see that slide. Yeah. That's that's one slide from something, uh, a video we did called uh, Panadapter Webinar that you can get to from sdrplay.com. But if you were paying attention when I uh, described it earlier, it shows all those settings that we discussed, uh, selecting the rig type for uh, Omni rig, uh, selecting the correct COM port as shown in device manager. Uh, we set up rig one. So we go over and we look in the uh, main settings uh, panel. We see the TS590 is there. We see it's online and we see it's used by VRX zero because rig sync one has been clicked. And then over on the O-Rig tab in settings for RX control, we selected rig one. And that's basically all you need. Now, what Cody isn't telling us is he's got a more complicated setup because according to uh, his ticket, he's trying to do CW skimmer as well. And that's a, that's a whole separate other thing. Um, so pretty much you have to determine whether you want to sync uh, Uno with your Yesu, or do you want to sync Uno with your uh, CW skimmer, in which case you could set up rig two as a TS480, which is the command set that uh, uh, SDR Uno recognizes, set up a uh, COM port pair, and then you would, uh, to set that up, you'd click on the cat tab in uh, RX settings, specify one half of your COM port pair and do enable and connect, and that will then sync uh, SDR Uno to CW Skimmer. So that's that's the short answer to that. So, uh, like I say, this um, slide is part of the uh, web webinar uh, we did for pan adapters. So hopefully you can get that from uh, SDRplay.com. Mike has probably already found the link and posted it. Uh, no, oh, yeah, I'm just looking through the chat. He will. So anyway, I'm going to release that uh, if I can figure out how to stop share, stop sharing. There we go. And uh, let's see what we get back to. We're back to an RSPDX. How about that? So uh, that was a very brief uh, look at pan adapters. Um, there is a number of resources available uh, at sdrplay.com. If you go to the video and applications catalog in the search box, type in pan adapter. Uh, you will see a number of uh, videos that go through setting up pan adapters and things you need to care about and all that good stuff. Thanks very much, Steve. Okay. Um, Diane's Thank asking you. a question. Um, um, I actually have two basic questions. Ah. Um, um, and uh, maybe um, you can explain, Mike, uh, the, the difference between the LIF and the zero IF mode and the second question is the advantage of the decimation feature. Both I, can I do the, the, the easy answer first, Mike, and then you can do the complicated one? Sure, if you want to take the <laughs> low IF and zero IF, the decimation is no problem. Yeah, well, low, it, the simple rule of thumb is if you want to see a, if you want to use a sample rate of less than two megahertz, use LIF, low IF mode. 
and the sample rate um, is what determines the width of spectrum you see in, in the main spectrum window. Okay, so okay. If, if, for example, you had a two megahertz sample rate, you'll see two megahertz of spectrum. If you go all the way up to 10 megahertz of sample width, you will see 10 megahertz of spectrum. So anyway, if you want two megahertz or less, use low IF, okay? Uh, and uh, if you want more than two megahertz, I'd say up to 10 megahertz, then use zero IF and you can pick the number. And I don't think if you if you select 10 now, Mike, mm -hmm. do you still get a drop down for decimation? I don't think you do. No. The decimation is fixed at one. So, um, and, and the main reason for picking a smaller bandwidth is to give you a better granularity of your view and also to minimize the bandwidth required across the USB port. Um, especially if you're doing a, a full spectrum recording, your recordings will be a lot smaller if you pick a lower um, bandwidth, okay? So we can okay. take this argument one step further. If we're below two megahertz, and if you think about it, most HF bands are only 300 kilohertz wide, we can further invoke a decimation of say four, and that gets our final sample rate down to uh, yeah you, yeah down to uh, 500 kilohertz. So now we're seeing a 500 kilohertz worth of spectrum, which is more than enough to accommodate a full HF band. So uh, that's the, that's the reason you'd use it. So uh, the basic sample rates available from the hardware are from 10 megahertz down to two megahertz, and if two megahertz is still too much, you can use decimation to get even lower. And, and what that really means is, oh, I should point out, in the uh, upper left window where, where Mike had the uh, LIF and the decimation numbers, um, why don't I see the sample right there anymore, Mike? Oh, because you, I'm in low IF mode. Yeah, well, you should, it should, uh, okay, there you go. So if you look at the sample rate and you divide by the decimation value, that gives you the final sample rate, which appears in the upper right corner. Mike, you're great at doing this while I'm talking. That's fantastic. <laughs> so uh, if, if we pick uh, another decimation number like two. Um, I selected four, but. Okay, well, four, then you'll see the final sample rate has gone down to 500 kilohertz, and you'll see 500 kilohertz of bandwidth in the, uh, in the spectrum window. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Peter? No, that's it at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Well, question. Got a question from Diane. Uh, okay. Diane's asking: uh, Is it possible to connect SDR Uno to a login program such as Log for Old Man without the need to have a rig active and connected via a CAT cable? Yes, you can use the serial configuration versus Omni rig and set up a COM port pair, and then set the rig as a TS-490 and log for OM, and log for OM will speak to SDR Uno using that Kenwood command set. And any frequency changes, it will only send frequency and mode, and that's all you'll need for that log for OM. That's TS-480, Mike, you said. Yeah, is it, okay, so that's yeah. the way you would, you would set yeah. that in log for OM and create a COM port pair. So I can demo briefly. Let me pull up my COM port pair. I'm using VSPE. I have two virtual COM ports, one and two. So if this was, let's say, pretend we're using log for OM, I'm going to assign SDR Uno to COM1 under CAT and enable it. And then I'll load up this software, pretend that this is uh, log for OM. And within this software, I'm going to select COM2 with that specific rig, as long as I can get this to move over. There you go. Uh, where is it? It's under tools, option settings. And then in the secondary software, I set up COM2. Now they will communicate if I bring SDR Uno back into view. And like I said, just pretend that this is log for OM. As I change frequencies, this changes because this is speaking the Kenwood command set and log for L OM should accept that. Yeah, I think you did a video on it, didn't you, Mike? That's on the- uh, Not on, I, I've used on log for OM using OmniRig, but it, she oh, wants to use it without having a rig 
and without using OmniRig. So we're going to trick log for om into thinking that there right. is a rig on the other end, which would be a Kenwood, and we'll just use a, a COM port pair. Which is actually a good example of when you would use that cat tab that we talked yeah. about when we were setting up pan adapters. That's yeah. this is you know, this is third party software controlling SDR Uno as if it was a TS four eighty. I do the same thing with WSJTX. I don't have uh, a rig here, but if I launch WSJTX, SDR Uno is still running. I'm on 19 decibel 980. Let's bring up WSJTX and I'm gonna bring this into view. Same principle, COM1, COM2, uh, tricking it in, the, in what rig it is. And I'll select, let's say 20 meters and it just tuned 31 meters or 30 meters or 17. Anything that I select here, it will automatically tune SDR Uno. Same principle with log for OM. The only thing, like I said, you'll only get frequency and mode. Uh, you should still be able to use the DX cluster. You might have to manually uh, put in some other information, but it still should do call lookups. And it, even if you're not on a, on a, let's say an amateur radio frequency and you want to use it for shortwave radio logging, just take out the stuff that it auto populates and put the station information in there and it should be fine. Did that answer your question, Diane? Yeah, she's saying, thanks, Mike. The rig has been getting a little warm recently. Okay. All right, well, any, any, if you would like to follow up, uh, just let me know and I'll try to walk you through it one-on-one. -on -one. But what I said should absolutely work. Right. Next one, Steve Sheridan. How do I use a scheduler with plugins? Some plugins demand inputs like boxes checked. Is the plugin started before the scheduler and then Uno stopped? Steve, do you want to take the set, uh, the scheduler? Yeah, I can't give you a definitive answer on that because I, I've not really tried it. But uh, in theory, uh, I think your workaround is correct. Um, you have a good point that some of the plugins were developed before the scheduler came along. And uh, if there's any input required uh, when the scheduler kicks off and loads the plugin, then of course you're SOL. So I believe if you do the strategy you described of, of starting the plugin first and just leave it running, then you should be good to go when the scheduler starts doing its thing. Uh, do you know any different, Mike? Unfortunately, I do not. I, I've never gone in a mode where I wanted to do that. Um, I, I, apart from the plugin for an audio recorder, I've not really seen much use for plugins with the scheduler. Correct. But I mean, yeah, I, I can see how, you know, there may be situations where you'd like to do that. And I think the other thing that um, we have uh, requested of the plugin developers is that they, you know, make any necessary modifications that are needed to, to the plugin so that you know, they can start up in some known default state, at least. That's really a function of the plugin author that more than owner. So I suspect not the, not the most definitive answer you were looking for, Steve, but I hope it was close enough. Okay, I've got another question. Okay, just shoot them off, Andy. Uh, Mike, I have a question. Could it not be solved so that it's possible to step through the save frequencies with the up and down keys? It's a bit slow with the mouse and I often mm -hmm. click next to it. That's the only option as of right now. Uh, I can't speak for when SDR Uno Connect comes out because that it's it hasn't been in my hands yet. But the only option is that mouse clicking within the uh, memory panel. The memory panel is, a, is an external widget that Andy is coded and works with. Uh, Andy is our developer. Uh, it, it's an external widget, and it, that's the, the only way as of right now that I'm aware of is by pointing and clicking versus being able to use your arrow keys, unfortunately. Yeah, it was, I mean, realistically, it was, it was kind of a way to get that functionality easily, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily well integrated with other functions within Uno, for example, the scanner. So that's one of the reasons, you know, as, as the features have grown on SDI Uno over the last few years, uh, it's become somewhat bulky and unwieldy. And, and that was why we ultimately made the decision, hey, it's time to stop putting band-aids on top of band-aids, mm -hmm. or if you're English, plasters on top of plasters. 
and uh, and give it a fresh start and and you know re reimagine uh, SDR Uno with all the features that we know we want and we want to maintain and uh, but do it in a much uh, more clean and sanitary way and hence SDR Connect and that's what we're trying to do now. Yeah. Right. Next one is what's the best way to set the baseline on waterfall? How much gain is needed? I run max gain unless I see an ADC overload, then I'll just back it off a hair. Yeah. I set my, well, it depends on your antenna. How linear is your antenna? Let's take a look here. Uh, as I go up and down the band, I'm, I'm flatlining at about negative 115, 120 as I go up and down. So I'm pretty linear. Where do you want your baseline to be? Wherever you're most comfortable viewing it. I think the key thing you said there, Mike, is RF gain always at the max, unless you see an overload warning. Correct. And then just step it down a little bit until it, it's not there constantly. Here's an ADC and, overload. Let's take this off. Here's the ADC overload. I'm in the medium wave broadcast band, right? I'm getting flooded. Right. Am I sharing? No, you're no. not sharing. Okay. Yet. That would help. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were looking at you staring at the screens. So. Yeah, that's just... that's. There we go. That's yeah, just that's me being me. All right, so here's an ADC overload. I'm in the medium wave band. I got the RF gain at max, like I suggested, and here's the overload. So I'm just gonna back it off a hair. A little bit more, a little bit more, I'm getting a flash. Flash is okay, a little bit more, it's gone. This is where I wanna be for this particular okay. band. Yes. Now hit the settings button, Mike, and change the baseline. No, no, no. In, in yeah, oh, in, in the, yeah, in here you can go right into your settings and change your base. My, I leave mine at default, <coughs> but you can adjust this baseline here or the range, the, the y axis of it. Oh, I, like to get it, the, I, I, like, I like to get it down near the bottom so I don't have all that blue area underneath the. the it trace. depends on the antenna, it depends on what band you're on. Yeah. In my opinion, I mean, but it's, it's, it's not, I, I mean, I leave mine as a one setting fits all. You you can adjust it however you see fit or create a profile. Yeah, exactly. That's that, that, that's another example of, of how you and I use it differently, Mike. Mm -hmm. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> so, I mean, as like I said, as I go up and down the band, I'm pretty linear across my antenna's receive range. Mm -hmm. So I like to leave it right about here. I mean, can I bring this down? Absolutely. It's just, I'm so used to it. It's not necessary. But in the aux SP, I do have to make an adjustment where I have to, by default, the base is right about here, but I have to show a little bit more because that's the way I particularly like it. Mm -hmm. But again, customize it to how you see fit. If you make a mistake, options, reset to default, and, and you're back to square one or create a profile. And my uh, yes. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah. Um, when I sent the ticket over, I sent those uh, slides over. Okay. My biggest problem is that massive um, spur. It, obviously, it's not, it's a, not a spur. Like, whatever that is, bang in the middle of the screen. What can I do to move that out a bit? Because obviously, that's my receive point, and I'm losing all the signals. Well, first, it's, it's, you, you have to see where it's coming from. If you connect an antenna directly to the RSP, not through the rig, is that spike there? No. Okay. When you connect, how uh, how is the rig connected to the RSP? IF out or using a, an RF switch? Uh, I'm using the internal second IF, which I think is the problem. Are you um, hitting the bandwidth edges of that IF? It, it could be. I, I might be. I'm. I'm. It's all new to me, so I'm well, struggling. The, the IF output frequency in the main window settings panel. Mike, if you can share again. Uh, sure. Uh, share. Let's go here. Well, I reset Uno, so let me just do this real quick. Let me just bring this back into view. Anyway, what what Mike's going to bring up is if you go to the Uno main window and click on settings, there's a tab there where you specify the IF frequency that you're using coming out of your rig. Uh, main tab or? It's in main uh, settings. And then main it's, main. I forget which particular tab it is. I just tap through until I see it. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, I've right. set it to the uh, second IF. 
Um, but exactly I'm thinking I've got the gain controls too high because I'm listening to the IF rather than trying to pull in the whole world via the antenna. Well, if you lower your gain, is that spike or which uh, is that abnormality decreasing? Uh, yes, is it increasing by a lot. It, it decreases quite a lot, but it's still there. So I'm wondering if I'm using the right settings. I, as I said, complete newbie, and okay. I'm in a big learning curve here. Well, the, pro the problem you have is, do you know what your IF bandwidth is at that point? Uh, yes. Uh, going by the SDR kits, they've told me it's 10.6, uh, 695 or 95. And it has to be done in, uh, can't be done in megs, it has to be done in hertz. So obviously add mm -hmm. a couple of zeros on the end uh, to bring it correct. Is that the IF frequency. frequency or the bandwidth? Yes. Uh, That's the not, frequency. Not sure on the bandwidth. I might be obviously, as you said, in buffing it either end, I might need to get a TR switch. That's I mean, your what, best option. Yeah, I, I, I hate using IF out. That, that big lump you see in the middle may be just your IF output from your rig. And the reason it's a hump and not a flat line across the screen is because it doesn't have much bandwidth. Uh, you know, the whole purpose of having a, a second IF in a super head receiver is, is to minimize any out of band signals. So your entire spectrum may be that lump. See ah. what I'm saying? So if you're looking at a swathe of spectrum in UNO that exceeds your IF bandwidth, mm -hmm. you're not going to see anything on either side. All oh, right, right. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I really, really dislike using IF out. Uh, if only because I can't click on the spectrum to tune it. You will do much better to... What kind of rig do you have? Uh, I've got a Kenwood TS2000. TS2000, then what I suggest is you use an external TR switch like the uh, MFJ1708B-SDR. Mm -hmm. And that will open up the whole world to you. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to definitely try one of them. I'll see if anyone local to me has got one I can try rather than just go out and buy one and hope. Well, I don't think there's any hope about it. We've got, you know, hundreds, if I, not thousands. I know it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I use it with, you know, with... Uh, all sorts of stuff. So, um, you know, it, it is the way to go and it will, it will really bring that TS 2000 to life. You know, you'll, you'll have all the same bells and whistles that you get on those, you know, multi thousands of pound uh, rigs with the built in displays and more. You, you can just do so much more with it. And, uh, you know, IF out is, is really not good. Okay. I think that's answered my questions and my problems on my ticket. Um, another quick one. I can hear things on the uh, SDR, which I can't hear on the rig. Is that normal? Um, it, it's obviously got better receive than my old rig. Well, the TS2000? Is the the um, yeah, we, we, it can hear things sometimes. I can't hear on the normal rig if I've got the volume up. It's just not there, but I'm hearing someone really clearly. Is that normal? How, what filter width you had on the rig and what filter are you selected in SDR Uno? Um, I've just uh, left the rig pretty much. Um, is this upper sideband, lower sideband, AM signal? Is uh, upper sideband. Okay. Yeah. Is, is the rig synchronized to Uno? You've got the cat and everything working? Hey, oh, yeah, that that's all works absolutely perfect. But I think my biggest problem is the uh, where I've taken it from the second IF. Mm -hmm. It's just such a small window. Um, yeah. that's where my problems are. I think so. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't claim that an RSP will outperform, uh, any particular rig that's out there. There's some very good rigs out there. Um, but most users tell us that they find the performance at least comparable to most of them. Yeah. So, you know, why you would hear something on, on the RSP and not on the rig, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, well, she's an old rig of uh, vintage years, so um, technology moves on. Uh, again, the, the best way to do that uh, uh, test would be an A-B comparison with the external TR switch. And then, you know, you tune your rig to a certain frequency and tune SDR Uno to the same frequency or find something you think you can hear on SDR Uno. And, and then, you know, you still are going to have the cat thing. So you can, you can do an A-B comparison between the two and see if, if what you're hearing is is real or, or some weird artifact coming through the IF. 
Okay, thank you so much. I've taken far too much time. I'll let other questions be answered. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, thank you. Well, Jerry, Jerry, just a quick one. I've got uh, I've got one of the switches here, so I'll talk to you later on Facebook. Well, I'm sure we can sort something out. You're only in Bexhill, mate. I'm in Ashford. Uh, okay, Andy, cheers. No worries, mate. Okie dokie. Just, uh, just one thing, Jerry, though. Make sure you understand the rental terms that Andy's going to Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got one from Zoltan. FTA. Mm -hmm. Can it be set so that I can see on the map how far I'm receiving the broadcast without having a call sign? Nothing I see I'm FTA aware of. records in WSJTX, but nothing mm -hmm. in the SDR Uno plugin. You will need a call sign because PSK Reporter, as far as I know, only deals with, am well, since FTA is an amateur mode transmission, yeah. it's, it's for amateur radio operators so on the receive side uh map maybe with uh what is that something called let me see there's another app bear with me it's called grid tracker you can use yep. it uh, use grid don't need the call sign yeah use grid tracker which i have installed here you can use that and yeah. that will give you your map i'm doing the same thing again i'm looking at my screen pretending like i'm sharing yeah i'm doing good today <laughs> <laughs> your webcam's there's, pretty good though we, we get a pretty yeah. good view of the screen there you there's, go uh, here's grid tracker which can sync with WSJTX which then can sync with SDR Uno and there's my little blob I, mine has a call sign but this will show what you requested so take a look uh, for grid tracker Google will give you the most information about this Hopefully that answers the, the question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So that's all of the chat messages done. Um, I'm just having a quick scan through. I've got one from Bob USA. How do I, how do you record say the whole FM band on SDR sharp? Um, I don't have a clue. No, neither of no, I. Don't, don't use it. <laughs> yeah. No, don't use it at all. Um, yeah, there's one here really about um, keep support for Windows 7. Yes, and I'll address that. We will support Windows 7 as long as we can. Um, but we will not, we will not um, cripple future software development to support an out of date operating system. So, for example, SDR Uno 1.41 and soon 1.42 does support Windows 7 and will continue to do so. Uh, Connect, I don't remember whether Connect's going to support Windows 7 or not, Mike. I've forgotten my own presentation. Do you recall off the top of your head? I, off the top of my head, no, but that presentation is available. And Andy, you can plug that previous presentation. Let's and see if I can find it real quick, OK? Because uh, strangely enough, we all get confused. <laughs> there's so much stuff going on in yeah. so many different areas we uh okay let's see i, I know what it is there's a separate uh section i had in my deal here eight in 2022 here we go let's have a look at this i i don't remember any complete issue i, I I don't know that we talked about it. I, 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 I kind of got a feeling that Windows 7 will still be supported. The, o the only thing that's not supported that I'm aware of is, is the original RSP1, the RSP1A, and that's a hardware issue. Um, I don't remember ever hearing anything from, from the developer about... Um, dropping anything maybe not even dropping windows xp did do you recall anything mike roughly but i don't want to be quoted on it the the webinar the last webinar that andy did i believe he uh discussed it but i yeah, might be wrong if i am my apology but i'm almost 99 percent sure he did well he, he would know for sure right. um but i mean that there, there, there is you know like i say unless there is some compelling reason to, to do so, I mean, we, we you know, 
the fact that Microsoft has stopped supporting it is, is not a reason for us to stop supporting it if we still can. I mean, we, we would like as many people as possible to continue to use our, our software on, on whatever OS they're running. Yeah, it is covered, Steve, on the uh, on the talk um, that Andy gave. So if if they go on Ham Radio Network YouTube channel, they can find the talk or on the SDR webinar page. They'll find the talk and it's covered early in the talk. Do you remember what he said, Andy? I'm sure he said XP is not supported. The RSP one isn't supported. Okay, that's, that that, 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 sound, that yes, sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, we, we need Mike to share his screen again because he can answer this next question from David about uh, adjusting the filter bandwidth asymmetrically. Uh, that's in the AUX SP when you... Yeah, bring, yeah. Let's you, just you bring just, this uh, here. Let me yeah, hit play. Just do a shift and drag. It's very simple. You're, as you know, when you click and drag... And can you get Uno up, Mike? We're, we're just seeing your Skype. Yeah, it should. Uh... See, that's the trouble when you've got 15 monitors around the shack. You never know which one you're looking at. Okay, here we go. Let's bring this into view. Just hold down your control key on your keyboard. Uh, left click on the mouse on whichever filter edge you want to adjust, and then make that adjustment however you like. My control key is being held down on my keyboard. I'm mousing over the filter edge. I'm still holding the control key and i'm clicking and holding my left mouse button and making my adjustment and then i can let go and do the same on the left side or you can just use the mouse on either edge and do it symmetrically very good hopefully that answers that question um, very quickly, uh, Diane, will uh, 1.412 be released? 1.42 will be released, and that will be the, the last major release of SDR Uno. However, it will still be supported for bug fixes and things of that nature. So it will, it will not be uh, you know, totally disregarded, but there will not be a 1.43. The next version will be what we used to call SDR Uno 2.0, which has now been renamed SDR Connect. And then there's something here about RTL SDRs. Yeah. So um, the EXTIO version of SDR Uno is what you have for an RTL SDR. Uh, that's it. No, no plans for developing UNO for any other hardware. It's uh, SDR UNO and SDR Connect are designed to work very closely with the RSP hardware. Cut. Anybody have any other additional questions, comments, criticisms, anything? It's very low key here. Any, we can discuss anything you like when it comes to SDR UNO either here uh, using the mic or in chat. Uh, I'd just like to say at this point, if I can, just jumping in very quickly, I I wouldn't be without it in my shack now. And um, uh, I really see the added value of having it. How I've got my setup, um, I know that other people have often said they wanted to get similar or the same. But I have uh, SDR Uno driving pretty much everything. So I have, mm -hmm. uh, I have SDR Uno running with my RSP Duo. I then have that going to Log for Old Man, WSJTZ, because mm -hmm. I can run Auto CQ on it, and Grid Tracker. And I have the whole lot running from SDR Uno. Yeah. And it's absolutely Isn't it wild? flawless. Yeah. It works perfectly there's you know it takes a little bit of time if you don't know what you're doing in setting up but once you've got it right you would never ever go without ser uno and the craziest part of it is many people often say how comes you're spotting everybody and putting them on the ds cluster and uh the reason for that is because i'm seeing them first on the waterfall yeah. the minute you see them on the waterfall you click the mouse i'm on them before they're calling their first cq 
Let me ask you a question, Andy. How how high has your Q cell count went up since using Estero Uno versus Massive. not having? Yeah, it has. It's huge. I'm currently yeah. at I'm currently at approximately fourteen and a half thousand QSOs right. in three years, and two years of those, two years of those were spent without SCR Uno running the show. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be without it. And anybody now who's uh, newly licensed or coming back to the hobby, I've said right from the word go, do yourself a favor, get an RSP, uh, you know, an RSP unit, SCR Uno, and, and rig control, and you'll be away. And, and I wouldn't be without it. Honestly, I really wouldn't. So much so that there's so many people that I have to go on TeamViewer and set up. And I, I get them to download software. Once they've downloaded it all and configured a whole lot online, <laughs> online I just get I just get messages saying, I've got it. I've got the RSP duo. Now what do I do? Right. Right, here's a list of what to download. And then hey. we'll jump on TeamViewer and get you up and running. And they all say the same. They all say the same. They never realize, just by using it in that way, they never realize how much it increases the QSO count. It really does. Yeah. Phenomenal. Well, we're, we're very indebted to uh, our users, uh, like you, Andy, and, and others, because, you know, SDR Uno has the basic hooks for a lot of this stuff. You know, you talked about several uh, third-party software programs. A lot of users have been the ones that initially figured out how to hook it up, you know. And uh, one, once you get the basic idea, you know, there's the sky's pretty much the limit. And... Uh, Again, a, a big thank you to all our users for coming up for some of these ideas. So mm -hmm. we appreciate that. It's a, it's kind of like a big team effort. So I, I want to hit a couple of questions that came up in the chat. Diane was asking about the Mac. Um, Diane, I am the biggest Mac user on the planet. I have a Mac Mini on my desk here and a Mac M1. And uh, I use the M1 to demonstrate the, uh, the core DSP engine of SDR Connect at Dayton this year. So the Mac will definitely be supported. Um, then a question came in from Steve Sheridan. Is there a list of settings that profiles save and which ones it doesn't? Basically, um, the profiles save every receiver setting. So uh, uh, anything that you set in RX control will be set uh, it will, will be saved in the profile. Um, there's probably some other things as well, Mike. Uh, anything except the actual window spacing, which is done with workspaces. Yeah. SDR Windows controls, controls are saved in the workspace. RSP controls are saved in the profile. There you go. A, a list I don't have and which exact specific ones that I do not have either. <laughs> I like this one. I, uh, Mike, I, I bet you can build on this. Is there a software that automatically tries to guess which digital signal is tuned in? <clears throat> I yes. think there are certain government agencies that have spent millions of dollars trying to do something like that. <laughs> yes, there is software, and it's out of my reach and your reach. Uh, there's not, The next closest thing is multi-PSK with the analyzer function, but it's nothing like, let's say, Crypto 500, uh, from, but that's like I said, that's out of our hands. We we can't even get it for the price and the licensing agreement for that. It's for the government. It, it, it comes in time. You'll be able to ID signals. There's a, a website, Signal Wiki. Uh, I'll find it and then I'll post a link. But it it will come in time with with using the the software where you can look at the waterfall and you can ID that signal just by looking at the waveform. And that that will come. It just it just comes with practice and experience and, and listening. Just like if I hear da -de 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 -de, oh that's CW. If I hear uh, uh, you know somebody transmitting an upper sideband, I know that it's an upper sideband uh, transmission. It just it will come in time. But this, the only other software that will allow you to do that slightly is multi PSK with its analyzer or using the Signal Wiki uh, website, which will show waveforms for every type of transmission, and then you can visually do the comparison between the two. Not, not to mention the ones that use a specific uh, scheme on a specific mm -hmm. frequency. So it, it will all come in time. If, if two, three months of using Uno and, and listening to these signals and seeing these signals, you'll be able to ID these without this quicker than the software can. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Jerry says, could we have a list, please? I'm not sure, a list of what? 
Um, and Zoltan, you know, same problem. Yeah, well, you, it, it comes with experience. You, you'll get used to it. Um, you know, you can recognize all the, uh, the, the uh, you know, like DRM is very distinctive when it mm -hmm. appears on the waveform and, and stuff like that. You just just keep at it and you'll, you'll figure it out. Hang on, let me just post this link. I posted oh, the link in chat. So that will definitely help that person with the question about ID and signals. Maybe Jerry was asking for a list of settings that profiles say. I'm not aware of one of you, Mike. I'm sorry, say that again. I was looking at the chat. A, a list of the settings that are saved in the profile? That I don't have. Any other questions? Oh, he says he means all the programs that oh Andy has used. Uh, well, that, goes, that goes back to you then, Andy. Yeah, I'll I'll message you about it, Jerry. It's uh, but what I use is SDR Uno. I use uh, Log for OM. I use WXJTZ. I use the modded version. Uh, the modded version enable it allows me to use uh, Auto CQ. So rather than sitting in and clicking. If ever I'm not in the shack, I'll just leave it running, and um, and and in a nutshell, it just logs everything for me. It's automatic, and then I use Grid Tracker as well. So I'm using four pieces of software. Everything gets logged to QRZ, Log of the World, uh, EQSL, etc. Club Log. Everything gets logged across the board. So it's quite easy to set up. Um, I actually discovered it from following one of steve's videos oh on how God. to connect on how to it's video number an008 <laughs> it's how to connect hrd oh, that <laughs> so one, yeah. it's the same principle exactly the same principle yeah, that's it that's exactly true and that gets back to what you were saying earlier you know once you've done one you know some of them have got a few wrinkles and HRD was particularly problematic, and uh, we're still working actually with with Mike Carper at HRD to try and and make it bolt more directly into into Uno. And uh, for some reason, there seems to be incessant delays on that. So I'm not sure what's going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I'm, I'm curious, Andy. So do you actually spend any time in the shack, or do you just set all this shit up and then go down the pub? <laughs> no, I'm always in there. No, no, I'm in. I'm in there. Um, what I have a tendency of doing is first thing in the morning, I'll jump on 20 meters, work the Australian stations at around 7 a.m. And then uh, and when I'm ready to go to go out, I just leave it, uh, leave it running. Just leave uh, leave WSJTZ running and I just leave it running all day. And it's quite good because I can get see depending on what band I am. Normally I'm running 17 meters. And I can just see between 10 and 1 p.m. the band will open to Japan. Um, and I'll get a flurry of about seven QSOs coming in one after the other from, from Japan. And then what I do is one of the days when I'm in here, I'll actually wait for that to open. As soon as I see the first one, get it off a of WSJTX on USSB, start working the Japanese stations. And I spot them. They're very faint, but I get them coming in. And the only way that I spot them is through SDR Uno. I see them coming on the waterfall, see it very faint. And I like the, the, the visualization aspect, Steve. I need to be able to see the whole spectrum at once. So I can click anywhere on the band and I know I'm on a signal. There's nothing worse than dialing up and down without the, the, the SDR Uno. Just, you know, up and down on the VFO trying to look for a signal when you've got it visually you know you as soon as you click on the mouse you're on and that's it you're you're locked on to the signal. that's true as well for old school people that don't even mess with any of this digital stuff you know once you put that pan adapter capability on any old rig uh, i mean it's night and day once someone's had a pan adapter working they ain't never going to go back to twiddling the knob to try and hear people calling cq no never never i wouldn't i wouldn't have it any other way and I, a quick message to Peter. Cheers to you too, mate. Can you pass a glass over this way? <laughs> I 
I would do if it 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 would be so easy. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Tough life, huh? I live directly Tough in the life. vineyards here, as you can see, and uh, of course, uh, it's for me. It's it's very easy to to <laughs> get a nice glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So Bo Barry says, "What radio?" I don't know if that was. He's asking you, Andy, what you're using, or. Uh, well, I'm using a seventy six ten. Before okay, so that, I Icon. used a seventy three hundred, and Icom again, because obviously Icom's only down the road to me. So Icom UK's in Home Bay, is about fifteen miles from me. So okay. it's it's nice and easy, and uh, uh, they they've got really strong links with uh, with the club. But um, it doesn't matter what rig you're using. It right. doesn't matter. You can make you can get any rig to work. Yeah, that the, you know that the the guy that was on here with the TS two thousand. Yeah, I mean, TS two thousand. That, that'd be perfectly good for the same thing, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Any of them. It doesn't matter the rig, because what you're going to do is, irrespective of the rig, the age of the rigs, it's all irrelevant. Because on uh, if you're using if you're using like Omni rig to do it, then you're going to have to put it as a Kenwood anyway. So it's irrelevant what the actual physical rig is because. To all intents and purposes, it's a Kenwood TS four eighty. That's what yeah. it's gonna be, irrespective of the actual rig. Yeah. I mean the only reason you need a rig is if you actually want to transmit. You know? Yes. <laughs> but it, it, I mean it, it is a it is a lot of fun, no doubt about it. How are we doing on the questions? Uh, and I should I also ask Mike, how are we doing on time? Yeah, I think we're I think we're close now, Mike, for you yes. to head off. Anybody else with any last minute questions, comments, suggestions? Just something from KD6RF. Um, and we'll make this the final one before you jump. Mm -hmm. So since I've got uh, just another uh, reiteration of request for A, a fix for the frequency, frequency scale jumping bug as per groups.io forum. And B... A request for audio spectrum stroke waterfall window that looks just like the other spectrum stroke waterfall windows plus clickable notches and draggable LPF, HPF. Um, okay, well, the bug looks like it was legit. Um, I've, I've turned that back into Andy to look at. Um, strangely enough, I, I, I wasn't aware of it. It's not flagged in the, in the known issues list, so we'll see what he comes back with. I don't know about... Request for audio spectrum waterfall window that looks like I'm not sure what you're looking for that isn't the auxiliary spectrum window already. Uh, that has clickable notches and draggable low pass and high pass filters. Unless you're talking about the actual audio itself. Um, can you clarify that for us a little bit? for Tetra and DMR. Did Mike leave us already? No, I'm here. I'm He's here. I don't think, uh, I, I'm not sure what the situation is as regards license terms for Tetra and or DMR. And I'm also not sure that those signals might usually be encrypted anyway, so it's not going to do you much good. Um, I'm not that familiar with those modes. Uh, Andy, you might know more than I do on that. You probably do. Or no, might. no. Nothing here on Tetra, but as far as DMR, you can use uh, DSD decoder. You can use SDR Angel, which has its own uh, built-in decoder, P25 decoder, and it works with the RSP. Uh, nothing... Uh, standalone that I'm aware of as far as an, an SDR Uno, uh, let's say, plug-in. Well, 
Okay. Well, I think I think we're getting pretty close to. Yeah, I think we're there. Yep. I'll stop. I'll stop the recording. One moment. Let me stop the recording. Okay. Well, early. thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, I hope we at least answered most of your questions. And, I thought uh, it was very good, Steve. I think you've all done brilliantly well. Thank you very much. It's really great. Thank you, thank you John. Really well, good. Let's do a, another. Let's do this in. Well, Steve, you're you're doing your thing. Uh, let's do another one. Let's. I'm sure there's other people that have additional oh, questions that didn't get answered, and we'll we'll answer them. I think maybe maybe the beginning of September, guys, because yeah. August is a big holiday time, yeah. isn't it? September is perfect. Yeah, yeah, like, that, that'd be October. brilliant. Yeah, September, yeah. October, the more the merrier. And yeah. just, you know, ask, ask the questions. Like I said, if, if we don't have the answer, we'll get the answer for you. And if, if we can't get the answer, then there there is no answer to be had. Fair enough. That's, <laughs> that's fair to me. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a plan. Okay, thanks, everyone. You can go outside and work on your tan now. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks very much. Thanks, thanks Steve. All. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your everybody outstanding day. support. Yeah. Thanks for all your bye time, bye. guys. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. day, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye -bye. well, uh, just... Uh, I'm holding fire. For I've got a lot of people talking all around me, so I'm not the best person to make an intro. So you better do it, Andy. Just okay, a little okay. warm, isn't it? <clears throat> so this evening... This evening